Hi, I am Life Coach Latricia Booker with Kingdom Business, where we are empowered, where we heal, get delivered, and get free, where we know who we are. We elevate our minds and our spirits and raise and expand our consciousness to ultimately walk in our true divine purpose. That is the truth of who we really are, who God created us to be. And so in today's video, I want to talk about healing your triggers. And so many of times, most of us, if we have had some wounds, if we have had some unresolved issues, if we experience things in life that have affected us in a certain manner, we have triggers. And that's mostly everybody, everybody in the world, maybe a, a few, a rare few are exempt from this. However, the majority of the collected the collective humanity has triggers. And so when those tr the triggers are there because they're showing you that you need to heal something. The triggers are there because they are showing you that you have unresolved issues. So if you recognize that you are triggered by something, by someone, whatever it may be, that's an indication to you that you need to do some inner work. You may need to heal something. You may need to resolve some issue within yourself. So the idea is when you get triggered, you don't want to just continue to allow yourself to get triggered. The idea is when you know you're being triggered, you want to go within and get to the root of why you're being triggered in that way. It may be because of something that you experience and this is what it reminds you of. Um, it may come from, again, a wound that you may have that you never healed, which means because that has never been healed, you need to heal it. It may come from some trauma that lives inside of you from an experience or experiences that you've had, which again means you need to go within and you need to heal that. And so when you do these things, you remove the trigger. Therefore, you can't be triggered. And it's the same thing as saying pushing your button. Sometimes, People push your buttons on purpose. And what I would say to that is, you may want to remove yourself to the best of your ability from, one, from someone who pushes your buttons or triggers you on purpose. Because many of times they are literally trying to cause you harm. Not always. Sometimes they just want a, a reaction. And sometimes that's a way of them getting attention or filling themselves up, making themselves feel powerful or in control of you because they got a reaction from you. It's a thing of control, which means, by the way, that means they have some unresolved issues, clearly. They have some things going on in them that may need to be healed. They have some things going on that they need to deal with, but maybe they're not dealing with them. You know, it's not up to us or you to tell someone else to deal with their things. Everyone makes a choice for themselves. The whole point in me saying that is if you're dealing with someone or around someone that tries to push your buttons on purpose, you may want to remove yourself from them. Or if you're in a situation where you have to deal with them, distance yourself and avoid them as much as possible. Just deal with them to the extent that you have to. And in doing all that, you still want to go within and heal those things within you so that you won't be triggered, so that that button won't be there to push anymore. When you remove a button, it's not there to push. And so the other part of that is sometimes people trigger us unaware. They don't mean it. They have no intention on triggering us. They mean no harm, none. And so even in that, you still want to go within and deal with yourself because, again, those things are showing up. And you are, those triggers in, in, in and of themselves are showing themselves to say, hey, you need to heal something. You need to resolve something within yourself. So the whole idea is to go in and do the work. 
Now, I want to say this too. Although many of times people are not trying to trigger you, they are unaware of what they're doing. Sometimes, and this is only sometimes, not always, because they, the other person might have some unresolved issues with them, within themselves, or something going on with them. They will tend to do certain certain things towards you as a way of acting out whatever is going on with them, even though they're not intentionally trying to trigger you, if that makes sense. So say, for instance, if you're in a relationship with someone and they trigger you and maybe you trigger them, sometimes the way that plays out is whatever they have going on within them pushes you triggers you, pushes your button, and you may do the same thing. So here's the key to that. When you come to the realization that that is what's happening, and again, this is a person that's not doing it on purpose. They just have some things going on within them, and you guys may be pushing each other buttons, but somebody, light bulbs come on, and that may be you, and you realize, and your light bulb is coming on right now because you're listening to this video. You're watching this video. So that's a light bulb. That's an aha moment. You are now being made aware of the triggers. So what you want to do is deal with yourself again, heal yourself from whatever it is you need to hear from so that you won't push their button, number one, and then you have to do the work, too, for where they're trying to attempt to push your buttons or trigger you. So what happens is when you do that, when you do the work, instead of responding negatively to them, you just recognize, oh, this is something I need to heal within myself. Let me deal with that. So what happens many a times, we have insecurities. And those insecurities literally come from a place of being wounded or being taught a certain way of, or even taught yourself a certain way, looking at things a certain way. For whatever reason, it could have stemmed from anywhere. That's the whole idea. Maybe you want to look at that. No, you do want to look at that. How deep you need to go depends on you and how far you, how deep you need to go. Because you maybe not have to go that deep to recover from certain insecurities. You can just make some decisions. You can just recognize where it stems from, why you feel that way, and heal it and recover it like that. You really can do that. Now, some things take a longer time. It's more of a process, but you would know what you need to do based on whatever it is you're discovering within yourself as to why you have that trigger or why you have that insecurity. Because when you're triggered, it's nothing but an insecurity, unsecured. And what I mean by that, when you become secure in whatever that is, there's no more insecurity because now you're secure in that area. And again, it stems from some belief, something you experienced that caused a certain belief. So what you're really doing is healing even those beliefs. You're healing those perspectives. You're ch literally changing your mind and your beliefs around whatever it is that's there. And so I, I look at insecurity as a limp. It's like... When you limping, you like this. Insecurity causes you to limp because you're not operating at your, at your fullest capacity because you got a little limp right there. So when you resolve those issues, when you heal whatever it is, when you change your mind and change your beliefs around whatever that is, that insecurity is, you stand up straight and you're no longer limping. Now you can walk with confidence securely. Now you're secure. And so I'm saying all that to say many a times our triggers are just insecurities that cause us to be insecure from something that happened along our way that caused us to believe things to be this, that, and the other, whatever it may be for you. And so I'll give you one example. Let's just say you were raised with a father who criticized you and maybe told you you were not good enough or you could never do that. If you take on that belief, even if sometimes you try not to, but subconsciously it's there. So that causes an insecurity. 
So anytime something happens or someone says something or anything that triggers, that pushes that button, you react in a negative manner. So when you notice that that's what you're doing, the idea is to go back to the root of where does this come from? Where does this insecurity come from? Where does this belief come from that, oh, first, what makes me do that? And then you, what is my insecurity here? What's going on here? Why do I respond that way? Then when you realize what the insecurity is, you track it back to where it came from. And it may not just be one thing. It may be many things. And the thing with that is, that means that's a compounded thing, which means that it's deeply embedded because you put it wasn't just one person or one thing that caused you to feel this way. It was things that kept happening, which fed that belief, whatever it is, <laughs> that make you feel insecure. So now you got to unpack all that. Unpack all that. As you unpack it, you're not limping no more. And so when you do that, you become secure. And the trigger is removed. There's no more triggering. No more buttons to push. It's not there. And so also what I want to speak on is back to when you were in a relationship with someone. And this is happening. And you realize what's going on. Again, you do your inner work. And I have to say that that person is actually there to show you these things. They don't know that. That's the way it's divinely orchestrated. Because your soul knows what you need. Not just that, you actually attracted them to you to help you get to the root of that. And let me tell you this, when you don't do it, and let's say you're no longer in a relationship with them or whatever, you could still be and it may be somebody else. It's going to always be somebody else there to trigger you there because the idea is to deal with it and resolve it so you won't be triggered anymore. So the trigger is not there. So you can be secure in whatever that is. So your belief can be changed, reprogrammed. So also when you are the one to recognize what's going on and instead of being triggered and triggering them, you do the work. What you have now done is changed the whole trajectory of the entire relationship. And really what you did is, is, is intervene and put an end to a toxic cycle, a dysfunctional cycle. And if that other party is receptive, they will shift. And it will only be a shift because you're no longer participating in the cycle. Now, if they're not receptive to the shift and to changing and letting go, they don't even always have to do the work because so many a times when you're doing the work within yourself, if they are a receptive party, you've actually done their work too for them. And they can they can get the shift or the healing. It's kind of like it trans, transfers to them if they're receptive. If they're not receptive, they're going to continue to push, which means that their stuff is so strong and heavy and they're so adamant about going in this cycle because they don't want to whatever for whatever reason. They just they just got to continue in this cycle. And what happens, you either remove yourself from them or they will remove themselves from you and go find somebody else to participate in that dance in that cycle with them. And so, again. When you do your part, you change the whole trajectory of the relationship. And even if that relationship has to fade away, new relationships will be, you actually will manifest and attract different relationships where that kind of a thing won't play out. Why? Because you don't have that going on in you anymore. So you're not going to attract someone that's going to need to, Play that role for you because you've done that work. So now you're going to attract someone that has already either done that work or maybe they didn't have so much of that work to do. Either way, that's this person, the new people, I'll say people, are not going to trigger you. And even if they try to, your triggers are gone. But they won't even try to because you have done the work. So you're no longer going to attract people into your life 
that make you do that work because that work is done. Now, what you may get is people that come into your life to cause you to do a different work <laughs> that now needs to be done. Something else that needs to be worked out in you. And usually that's on a different level. That's on a different level. It's more like challenging you to become better, even though triggering you is the same thing. It's challenging you to become your higher self, your God self. Because when you're when you're living and you're operating and being triggered by everything, you're not at your best. That's not your God self. That's not how he created us to be. We are supposed to be whole. And even though we we walk in our wholeness and we acknowledge it, if there's something there that's causing us a disturbance, we're not really at full capacity. Yet we can, can declare it to be so and then do the work. It's like anything. Call those things that be not. Speak it out into existence. Know who you are. Know who you are in God. Yes. But still do that work. Knowing who you are. And because you know who you are, you should be more motivated to do the work. To heal. So you can be at full capacity. So you can walk in the the walk in the in how what what do I say in the beginning of the videos? And and our ultimately to walk in our purpose, who God created us to be, who He created us to be. So when we do that work, we're becoming more and more and more of who He created us to be. But we have to do the work. And so I encourage you to heal your triggers. Heal your triggers. And you'll be surprised when you heal your triggers. For those who are receptive, their triggers will be healed as well. And so you all, I'm going to wrap it up right there. I hope this is helpful. So if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. And please click on that red subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. Please click on that bell right next to that red subscribe button. So that you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. You can also connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at Latricia Booker. You can connect with me on Twitter at Kingdom Business 9. That is Kingdom Business with one S and the number 9. And so you all, that is my time. So I am out.